Greetings friends, it's me Al Wayman at Creek Road Pottery and I wanted to come on and chat a bit about creating art and being able to sell that art. And a lot of folks, folks will ask, you know, how do I sell pots? Where should I sell it? Um, to who shall I sell it? Uh, there are a lot of good questions. And there's a lot of good platforms um, that you can go on that will help you do that. Uh, you can see my breath steaming. It's, it's a bit cold. Got the heater going in the shop. And um, got a hot coffee here. So I guess I'm going to start off as an introduction. And it's going to be pretty simple. And I want to go through it slowly for you. Uh, for beginners, I'm a beginner. And in pottery, you can't screw it up. It's all practice. Like we're not making nuclear weapons here, right? Um, and we can take our time and we can, we can have hard conversations and be able to listen to those things and make improvements. Some days we're going to want to roll the wheel over the bank. Some days we're going to want to throw the pots in the, in the kiln over the bank, right? But if you keep going, you always learn something from those mess ups and those mistakes. So in pottery, you're always learning what to do and what not to do. So uh, back in university, um, we went through this really good book. It's called Vis uh, Basic Visual Concepts and Principles. And it's gonna look backwards on the screen, but I've had it all these years. I graduated in 1996 from the foundation courses over at Keystone uh, College back then. And I then transferred to, uh, I worked an apprenticeship for a while, then went to Marywood University for, I think, a year. Took more time off to work at the pottery, then came back and finished my, my degree uh, at Marywood University. But uh, at Keystone, it was like art boot camp. And we had... We had, we went through this book and I didn't know we went through this book. They told us to buy it. We would refer to it every now, now and again for color theory uh, and, and uh, perspective and everything. And we looked at it a few times, but when I sat down and actually read it um, a few, few years later after I graduated, I was pretty amazed to find that our professors took us through this whole book and we didn't even realize it. So there's a lot of great concepts in here. And I wanted to go through some of those. Because if you're going to sell work, um, you need to first overcome the hurdles of making work. And having a concept, an idea, and then how to do all that. Uh, problem solving and figuring out if you're a cook or a chef. So starting out, you're going to be a cook, right? Which means you're going to have a recipe book, or you're going to go on Pinterest, and you're going to kind of see what other people are doing, like the masters um, on YouTube who put up videos, like Simon Leach and many others, uh, who've shown us for years how they make their pots, right? And you're going to copy some of those, and they are perfectly fine with you copying them. And you're going to try them until you get better so that you can start to build your own recipes eventually. We would hope. Building your own recipes. And then trying different things. Layering different things. And having good communication. So that's all good art is, in my opinion is forms that communicate really well. So forms that communicate really well uh, with many in many different ways. Um, they don't need to be all the same way, but you can layer them and there's no end to it. So there's a million ways to make a thing and I've only seen a few. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post uh, the link to the, 
the blog post, Wait But Why, on Cooks and Chefs down below, because it really helped me uh, see the difference in how people, creators think, how buyers think, uh, psychology, talks about tribes, all kinds of things. Because when you sell pots, and if you wanted to do it, um, you would also not only be creating work, but in my opinion, you'd also be creating a community of buyers that will support you, warm buyers. So there are many who take shortcuts. They may go on to Shopify or Etsy or their own websites, and they may be able to sell en masse, right? Um, but they're to cold buyers. And cold buyers come from ranking in the searches doing search engine optimization, having good photos, and having good titles that all compete in the algorithms that change all the times, all the time on, on the platforms, right? So you're, so you're in this tangled web, and some, some, some days you might end up uh, where it's more user geared towards uh, keywords, depending on the user and their search engine and what they put in, it may be user specific, so you may, for one user, end up on page 30, and for another, page 15, and for another, page 1. And so, aside from all that, you can do that, and you should, as you should diversify your revenue streams. But having a community base that they will support you and be there for you takes longer to build, but is far better in the long run and uh that has happened here and i really appreciate it i really appreciate all the creek road pottery fans and they have allowed me to do local shows uh and leave etsy so um i think what i want to talk about today is maybe some troubleshooting and thinking about the important things uh, to start so what we were taught to do is to start observing and we were taught to keep a sketchbook so i have mine here and i still carry it around look at how beat up this is and inside here i have years worth of pots that i want to do and concepts already mapped out and i have not done yet but these will be uh, future shows and I can look in here and if I get an idea, I'll write it down and um, and then, you know, these are Raku pots that I'm, that I'm working on or thinking about for a show. And uh, you can have those concepts and, and work through some of those problem solving uh, ideas that you can put on your pots in layers and themes in many different ways, in line and forms and textures and planes. And um, you can do movement, patterns, all kinds of things to make your uh, piece communicate the way that you want it and have control of that in a way that will, will speak to people. On the other hand, sometimes less is more, right? So it all depends on your your goals and and that's another uh, part of the problem solving when you first start so what i would encourage you to do is get a sketchbook right and start observing and drawing some forms uh very carefully and then uh, put down some ideas that you would like to try uh, maybe some other art maybe it's something that you're thinking about and then you'll have it stored up here in a nice little book where you can go back and look at some of those ideas. So this can be the start of your recipe book. So isn't that great? That, that's awesome. So um, I just wanted to post that. Hopefully this video won't run too long. And uh, so until next time, uh, take care, friends. Be well. And... Happy potting!